Happy GIS Day from Bloomerable Geographics. As this year has been rather extraordinary, the Bloomerable team thought we should get back to basics and ask people how they got into GIS, how it's changed over the years, and where the industry is headed next. When did you first become interested in GIS? My roommate and my best friend were both geography majors and in college, and I was a forestry major as an undergrad, and they convinced me to take one GIS course, and I was hooked. I was hooked to the point where I got my whole master's in it. I first learned about GIS in 2006, when I was part of the, the Argentine Army. So I took a human geography class in high school, um, and I don't remember if we really used the term GIS, but um, you know, we were basically doing some basic mapping stuff with things like Google Earth. How do you use GIS in your current position? So I took my GIS experience, my CAD experience, and I integrate um, GIS maps into my marketing. So I take a lot of that marketing data that people usually put into charts, I put into maps. I use I use Global Mapper, for example, to like I said, to create my own topographic maps. And the way I use GIS most of the time is to assist in planning the surveys, but um, I pretty much use different data sets, raster data sets, vector data sets uh, that are you would consider GIS data. Um, not just for planning, but I pretty much blend uh, survey measurements in with it to make final survey products. How have you seen GIS change over the years? I've seen uh, many changes that have led to improved GIS. For example, new interfaces um, or get data online, tracking GPS, GIS with uh, different languages, Portuguese, Spanish, and other languages. Low-cost GIS, like uh, Global Mapper, and uh, new tools, so different new tools. I was working with large regional and global climate data, and so we needed to make maps on a global scale or large regional scale, and so they needed to be equal area, and projections were very critical. And there were some issues with early GIS being able to do everything we needed with respect to that. So we used GIS when we could, and then we still use some of our own code as needed. Some of the statistics we were doing, we also needed to do separately. Um, early GIS ran on mainframes and powerful Unix workstations. Uh, when it finally came out for PC, it was very slow and limited and they were prohibitively expensive. It took a while to, for universities often to be able to afford them. And all that's changed. Now it's really fast on PCs, raster and vector, LiDAR data are all integrated in the same packages. Um, there are all kinds of supported formats and interoperability, and the costs have come way down, and there's a lot of open source options available as well. How has COVID-19 impacted GIS in 2020? I think it changed my work environment where I went in my last few positions, I worked in big rooms where we all sat in cubicles and anytime someone had a GIS question, we basically stand up and yodel and someone would answer. But working from home, we're a bit more isolated, but I we can use the chats to contact each other more. So it hasn't changed all that much. But I have noticed other people using COVID, like with the customers who write in, my favorite example so far is the guy who wants to go golfing, but with COVID, he's not allowed to travel. So he's using Global Mapper to make LiDAR ground point clouds that he can then upload into um, like a visualization thing, like a VR where he puts his helmet on and he pre pretends to golf in these like elaborate golf places, golf courses all over the world. A lot of people around the world are definitely moving to remote only work. Um, so that makes things like remote collaboration really important and also data sharing. Um, kind of different ways of sharing data. Um, those are probably the two main things. You know, for the most part, a lot of the industries that we work with um, are still using GIS similar to how they did in the past, um, just maybe in a different location. Um, and maybe not with the ability to collaborate immediately. And um, so that makes it important, you know, easy ways to share kind of progress on a project, whether that's, um, you know, simple images or, um, you know, actually sharing sets of data. 
Um, so yeah, that's probably the biggest way that it has changed. I don't see a big change for us. And I think the GIS enterprise as a whole has been pretty resilient through all of this, but there's definitely been a shift in who the heavy users are um, due to the economy being down. Uh, some sectors have fallen off a bit. Um, but on the other hand, I see a lot of uh, COVID mapping going on in the health disciplines. So that's kind of interesting to see. How do you think GIS will evolve in the future? GIS definitely has kind of moved from exclusively desktop and kind of locked into just sort of specialists in it. Um, and it's kind of broadened both of those scopes. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do on the web now. There's a lot of things that are accessible to a wide variety of audiences um, in terms of, you know, spatial analysis type technology. Um, and I think also kind of it's moved out of super specialized. Um, you know, I think some of the professionalization is important, like the GISP and things like that. but um, you know, it is definitely a tool that's being used in a variety of industries by a variety of different people. Um, so it has gotten sort of democratized that way in terms of, you know, being accessible to people that, you know, know some of the basics of um, analysis or whatever, whatever type of analysis that is relevant for their field that they're working in. I think that uh, in the future, GIS will be available, available to everyone. I think uh, companies will consider GIS for many jobs around the world. And finally, I think GIS are already part of our daily lives. I can say this, that when I was learning geographic information science, you had to learn a lot of computing, have, have programming abilities, and so it was not available to everyone who wanted to do um, social science, certain things like that. Um, it was a very highly quantitative endeavor. And the advent of GIS software and tools has made mapping and spatial analysis, probably more importantly, the map is the final product, but it's the spatial analysis that really is what you're trying to map and, and uh, convey information. Um, that is much more available to people now than I, I ever could have imagined, really. Well, one thing that I think is going to change is uh, more and more uh, engineering and surveying is going to be integrated and blended in with re the rest of uh, GIS. And in order for that to happen, they have to have common coordinate systems or people have to do their work on defined coordinate systems. And now the Blue Marble team would like to know how you would answer our questions. Feel free to comment below. Thank you for celebrating GIS Day with us. And from the Blue Marble team to yours, we're wishing you a happy and healthy rest of the year.